Comvita, a company that has been in constant downtrend for the last five years, after peaking in 2016, for various reasons, now has a new appointed CEO, a CEO that has a solid track record of delivering on both top and bottom line growth for premium global category leading brands, specifically in North America and China, where in the last financial year, Comvita has seen a 66 and 14% increase in sales respectively. And just in the six months of the new appointed CEO, the company has taken a drastic turn. Also, with a lot of studies suggesting the health benefits of Manuka Honey, as well as A-list artists such as Katy Perry mentioning her benefits from the product, Manuka Honey has been trending, especially last year due to COVID. So, from the management and the restructure of the company, to the increasing popularity and exposure of Manuka Honey that is starting to be used in health and beauty products, is Convita about ready to start bouncing back? And on top of that, is it an attractive buy? Let's jump right in and find out. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back and also happy new year. Hope everyone's had a good break. We definitely took some time off, but now it's time to get right back into it. So make sure to start the year off on a high and smash that like button. And if you're new to our channel, smash that subscribe button too. But for now, let's get right into it. So a little bit of background on the company. Convita produces and sells honey and honey related products, but just not any honey. Manuka honey, which at its purest form costs about 100 times more than regular honey. The plant manuka from which the honey is produced is rare and native to New Zealand. And although some manuka bushes can be found in Australia, New Zealand accounts for almost all of the world's production of manuka honey which represents 1% of the world's total honey, thus making Convita's honey extremely premium for which people from all around the world are willing to pay top dollar for. No other honey in the world is that rare or unique that it needs to be passed through a lab before it can be sold, like Manuka honey, truly giving the company a competitive edge. Not to mention the price of Manuka honey, which is going up day by day as it is starting to be used more and more in health and beauty products. So, where did it go all wrong? considering they have a solid product and a competitive itch. How have they been going down for the last five years? The business has been affected by a range of setbacks in recent years. From legislative changes, poor honey harvests have resulted in significant losses to revenue within some individual markets being varied unexpectedly. These factors added to the problems within the business itself where overcomplication and unsustainable costs put undue pressures on their bottom line. On top of that, the Chinese government imposed new tariffs and new regulations on the Daigao trade into mainland China. As a result, from the 2016 peak of 230 million in revenue and net profit after tax of 18 million, Convita's performance drastically declined in the following years, and in 2019, they ended with 171 million in revenue and a $27.7 million loss. So, as you can tell, the company needed rapid change to set it back on the direction of growth. Well, that's exactly what the company did. With the introduction of the new CEO, rapid changes were made and a complete restructuring 90 jobs from the company were made redundant and a completely new strategy of stabilizing, transforming and creating a long-term resilience was put forward. Many of the changes that have been made or are in progress include discontinuing 30% of their product range to focus on their core product categories where they are truly globally competitive, prioritizing China and North America as their growth markets and injecting an additional 6 million into marketing for these two markets for FY21. Additionally, successfully completing a $50 million capital raise in order to reduce their debt as the company's goal moving forward is to have zero debt, which as quoted by them, operating with less debt will give us more control over our future. And finally, they've turned the organization into more of a flat structure to streamline decisions making, which has helped in reshaping a lot of the company in this short period of time of only six months since the CEO joined in December 2019. So with all these changes in the new direction the CEO is thriving for, let's see how Convita has done last year. In the first half of FI 2020, the company announced it had an EBITDA loss of $8.8 million, while the second half of FI 2020 ending June 30th was a different story despite COVID-19. The second half of the year was strong with six consecutive profitable months with $27 million in cash flow and EBITDA of $13 million generated for the second half. And last year, they were finally able to put an end to their three consecutive bad harvest years and harvested 60% more year on year. Furthermore, to our surprise, COVID has actually helped Convita do better business. If we look at the Google search trends for Manuka Honey, it shows that there was a surge in Manuka Honey interest right when the virus outbreak became serious which we presumably assume had a great impact in the revenue growth they had during this period. If we look at the revenue breakdown by geographical segments, originally Convita's biggest segment, Australia and New Zealand, actually had a very bad year due to the challenges faced by the COVID-19, as the Daigo channel was severely impacted along with tourism. This segment had a 24% revenue decline from $69 million last year to just $52 million. 
However, for the segments they said they were going to prioritize, was positive. China grew by 10.9% in revenue from 52 million to 57 million, and the North American segment had an excellent year with 66% growth in revenue from 13 million to 22 million, which is a great sign that COVID has accelerated the Monica Honey exposure in North America. And during this time, distribution was increased by 1,000 stores in FI20. So in overall, with the other smaller segments growing also by two digits, Convita ended FI2020 with 14% increase in revenue at $195 million and net profit after tax loss of $9.7 million, which they said there was a $9.3 million one-off impact of non-operating items. Although it is still hard to tell whether the new CEO directly had any significant impact at all, but it is true things have turned around last year. Now looking forward to FY 2021, Convita has said for North America, they have agreed a further extension with 1,500 new distribution points, with one major outlet commencing in Q1 FY21, and increased their marketing investment for this segment as they focus on delivering sales through and long-term growth in North America. Also, Convita has recently announced their sales in Alibaba's 11.11, which is kind of like Amazon Prime Day, increased by 17%, which suggests a good sign for their H1 2021. However, just like all our other videos, we need to mention some risks that you might want to know. Convita had a good harvest in the year of 2020, but there is no guarantee 2021 will be good again. As we have seen before, with Convita having had three consecutive bad harvests years prior to 2020, another risk is the Daigao channel is still impacted by the pandemic and in the short term is likely to continue for a majority of Convita's FY 2021. Convita has mentioned before that China has put tariffs on the Daigao channel, which did not have a positive impact on them. And now with Australia and China tension, we cannot be sure what this could do. Although 2020 was a good turnaround for Convita, we still can't be sure yet if the COVID boost was a temporary thing or a spark that will continue to help North America grow. As the company is quoted, both channels experience elevated demand due to COVID, particularly in the first two months. So Convita's new direction seems to be on track so far on transforming Convita to be a better profitable business. COVID has helped Manuka Honey gain more exposure in North America. Their China segment is also steadily growing and a lot more restructuring has been done to reduce cost. However, whether any significant growth will continue to happen even after the COVID boost wears off will be the real test of whether the growth is on track. Also, given the China and Australia tensions right now, at least in the short term, the company could face more hurdles. So let us know, is Convita a buy or a sell for you? Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe button if you haven't so already. We'll catch you next time.